Hello, my name is Fiona, and I'm a certified teacher and a praxis coach with study.com. Are you planning to take the middle school mathematics exam? This is Praxis Test Code 5164. Praxis 5164 covers mathematics knowledge up through the middle school level. This problem set covers the subtopic content area of task of teaching. Task of teaching questions take applicable math skills and focus on your ability to teach these same skills to others. Let's review the types of questions you can expect to encounter on the exam. Problem number one. Ms. Juarez asks her students to compare the fractions three quarters and two thirds. Which of the following student answers and explanations are correct? Select all that apply. Three quarters is greater because when both fractions are compared on a number line, three quarters is closer to one. Two thirds is greater because the denominator is smaller. Three quarters is greater because three is a larger number than two. Or three quarters is greater because if you multiply the numerator to the denominator, the product of three and four is larger than the product of two and three. Option B states that two thirds is greater because the denominator is smaller. This is incorrect because the size of the denominator alone does not determine the size of the fraction. Rather, it depends on the relationship between the numerator and the denominator. Option C suggests that three quarters is greater because three is a larger number than two. This is also incorrect because comparing the numerators alone without considering the denominators does not accurately compare the fractions. Option D claims three quarters is greater because multiplying the numerator by the denominator gives a larger product. This method is incorrect for comparing fractions as it doesn't accurately reflect their sizes. The correct answer is option A. Comparing fractions on a number line is a valid method to determine which is larger. By placing three quarters, and two thirds on a number line, students can visually see that three quarters is closer to one than two thirds, thus confirming that three quarters is greater. Problem number two. Mr. Smith's class is learning about the distributive property. Which of the following problems should he choose as the best example to demonstrate the distributive property and evaluate whether his students are applying it correctly? Calculate the sum 5 plus 3 plus 7. Solve for x in the equation 2x plus 3 equals 11. Simplify the expression 3 times 4x plus 5. Or find the area of a rectangle with length 8 and width 5. Option A Ask students to calculate the sum 5 plus 3 plus 7. This problem is simply an addition problem and does not involve the distributive property. Option B involves solving for x in the equation 2x plus 3 equals 11, which primarily focuses on solving linear equations through basic algebraic manipulation and does not directly require the application of the distributive property. Option D asks students to find the area of a rectangle with length 8 and width 5, which involves basic multiplication of length and width, but does not illustrate the distributive property. The correct answer is option C, which asks students to simplify the expression 3 times 4x plus 5. This problem is ideal for demonstrating the distributive property because it requires students to distribute the multiplication over addition within the parentheses. By solving this problem, students can practice and demonstrate their understanding of how to apply the distributive property correctly. Problem number three. 
A teacher wants to show the students in an algebra class a real-life example of a data set that closely mirrors a quadratic function. Which of the following examples could the teacher correctly use? Select all that apply. The temperature outside at different times of the day. The height of a ball over time after it has been thrown upwards. The number of pages read in a book each day. Or the cost of buying different numbers of apples at a constant price per apple. Option A refers to the temperature outside at different times of the day. While the temperature might follow a smooth curve, it is better modeled by a sinusoidal function rather than a quadratic function due to its cyclic nature influenced by various environmental factors. Option C involves the number of pages read in a book each day. This typically would be modeled by a linear function or could vary randomly depending on the reader's pace making it unsuitable as a real-life example of a quadratic function. Option D involves the cost of buying different numbers of apples at a constant price per apple. This situation represents a linear function as the cost increases proportionally with the number of apples, not quadratically. The correct answer is option B. The height of a ball over time after it has been thrown upwards is a classic real-life example of a quadratic function. This scenario demonstrates a parabolic path. The height increases to a peak and then decreases, forming a perfect quadratic curve due to the influence of gravity. I trust I was able to clarify the types of questions you will find about the subtopic of task of teaching for the Praxis 5164 exam. Please remember to like and subscribe to this channel so that with study.com's help, you will feel well equipped and well prepared for exam day. Bye for now.